watching uh, Spider-Man No Way Home last night. I wasn't. Very fun. Yeah, on Marvel, fun. just Stan Lee would be proud. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you have to have seen the other Spider-Man films to yeah, really appreciate it, which yeah. everybody has. Yeah. So if you've seen the other Spider-Man films, it's, it's worth, it's, I, I just, when it was over, I was like, con it, Marvel just keeps <laughs> telling great stories. But before it started, there was a trailer for the film uh, starring Kenneth Branagh on a list of like Gal Gadot, a bunch of other people that are big, big names. And it's called uh, Death on the Nile. Ali Faisal. Pa his face popped up right there. I had totally had forgotten that he was in it. Yeah, so, not. yeah. <laughs> Stupid Rexy, it's of Corbin. I am Rick. And you follow the Instagram and stuff. Do it! Yeah! And you don't know what we're talking about, but end of an era. Yeah. End of the second era, I guess. This is you'll, you'll find out in a little end bit. Of the, end of the second era, yeah. This you'll, is you'll find out in a little bit. Phase two, ending, phase three, Switch. beginning. What happened? What did I do? Sorry, your forehead's going to pull Might need to pull it back here. And, uh, that's what she said. Anyways, but uh, today we're doing a movie review, you little... Uh, we what watched... was the word I was saying last night that I pronounced weird when we were walking into the theater? It was a... You weren't there, you were behind us. It was me and Alexis and Micah. I don't know, I wasn't there. I think it was a... Croissant. Croissant? Did you say croissant? Oh, no, it was... I was in the car, but earlier I was like, eh, it would be weird to just everywhere you go, ask somebody, excuse me, and pronounce it this way. Just wherever you are, like if you're out to dinner somewhere and it doesn't matter what the cuisine is, and just say, pardon me, I was wondering, instead of breadsticks, do you happen to have any croissant? And just pronounce it like that. Anyway, <laughs> we watched the new Malayalam uh, film, Boothakalam. That's right, Boothakalam. Boothakalam. <laughs> Uh, Almost Corbinized. Uh, written and directed by uh, Rahul uh, Sadisivan, Sadis forgive me for mispronouncing that, um, but yeah. And starring uh, uh, Shane, Shane and, uh, and Ravathi. We're the third there stars. Okay, cool. yep. Yeah, those are our two stars. And then also, uh, we've seen him in a couple things. But, yeah, uh, we've his... actually we've seen all three of the. There's the two main stars. Yeah. And then the supporting investigating guy, counselor, that we've seen all of them in multiple things before, like yeah. Bangalore Days, Kamalanji Nights, yeah, yeah, yeah. Virus. So. Um, but it's the drama horror mystery is how IMDb categorizes it. Um, it was almost like a, a people described it as Malayalam's the horror film. Um, I don't know that I describe it strictly as a horror film. Um, I, I kind of describe it almost the same as I described um, their superhero film. A Malayalam film that, that has some horror in it. Yeah, we'll get into that. Anyways, yeah, we but, yeah, definitely get into uh, that. It's a, it's a new uh, film, so uh, we'll go a little non-spoiler. Non-spoiler. Because that's what we do. And then we'll get into spoiler. We saw it on, um, it's on Sony Live, which is not available here, but we got it through the app Sling, and you have to, there's a whole thing. But yeah, yeah you, you can, if you're here in the United States, you can get it through Sling, and you have to like get a subscription to Sony LIV through Sling. It's a whole thing. Which is okay. I mean, it's, it's not expensive, and no. it's, yeah. But, uh, yeah, uh, so we'll go over a little non-spoiler, and then we'll get into spoilers. Yeah, so, Rick, you're so a non-spoiler non thought. Non-spoiler thought paragraph. With a score and a cinematography and acting and directing, and above all, story, as good as anything created by my favorite master of the horror genre, Mike Flanagan, Booth the Column is, for me, one of the best horror films we've seen coming out of India, and I, thankfully, it seems to have set itself up nicely to be more than just a one and done experience, but maybe a full blown franchise, and that is not spoiling anything. Oh, go because now. yeah, there's there's a there is. We'll talk about this in the spoilers, but the way that this film concludes, they left it open for the prospect, and I I hope it is. I'll we'll talk a lot about why I I liked it a lot. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I I really enjoyed it. But would you describe it as a full fledged horror? That's I what wouldn't. I wanted to get into. No, I wouldn't. But that's why I compare it to Flanagan because yeah. Flanagan. Is not full fledged horror. This is horror. More like, this is more like a psychological. Yes, and it's also a deeper meaning behind, obviously, a lot of the story uh, and stuff like that. But so, yeah, overall, really, really enjoyed this film. I think it's definitely worth a watch for for everyone, even if you don't like 
horror, I, I think you'll be I, fine. I, I, I me honestly too. think you'll be fine. If you're, if you, this is a great movie, I think, for somebody who's not a fan of the horror genre, or maybe you're like me, where I've grown to love the genre because I've been introduced to artists like Mike Flanagan, as well as if you haven't seen Jordan Peele's stuff of Us and Get Out, um, it's the thing that I've detested about horror in the past is just, it doesn't take that much to scare people, so yeah. I felt it wasn't creatively challenging. And I don't like, like Flanagan, I haven't seen a film of his, he has a film called Ouija Board. Yeah. I've had personal experiences with that, I don't want to go into that. So anything that glorifies the demonic, yeah. it can include the demonic, but yeah. the glorification of the demonic and things of that nature I don't like. Gotcha. This is a great entry point because like a Flanagan film, this is more a story about a family and two people and the good acting and storytelling that's going on and the interest you have and you're waiting very often for the proverbial scare to drop mm -hmm. and it just doesn't happen but you you know it's coming and even when it does come it's um it's, I, it's yeah. just so so yeah. well done i really please support this movie i i, I agree uh, this is definitely one of um uh it's Malayalam, you know how we love Malayalam cinema and, and the fact that they, they always, I think, um, appreciate story. Story and, and acting. acting. Over everything. Over everything. That's, that's, that, and not always, obviously. No. Is, but it, it seems like that's, a, that's something that is very, in that whole industry, that is what drives that industry. And story, kids, uh, while I was watching Spider-Man, I was sitting and watching the very last, I knew we were coming down to the last like 15, 20 minutes. And it just, it just was affirming in my heart. It was like, thank you, thank you, Marvel, for not just letting the juggernaut of this franchise be what you're riding on, but you guys took the time to write a good story. Yeah. And it's story that propels, always has been, always will. It's always story that is the paramount best part about great movies yeah yeah um but yeah it, the, from the acting to the sound to yeah. the oh, sound mixing to sound the, mixing was fantastic uh, the, just the overall soundscape of the entire mm -hmm. film i thought lended a lot to the horror feel of uh, of it even if there wasn't like a lot of jump scares uh i thought that was fantastic and so this is basically your non-spoilers Go see this film. I think you're going Please to enjoy it. it. There's a, just a few little things that I personally didn't enjoy, like a part of it. Um, Not for kids. No, I mean, it's teenagers whole, would be yeah, fine. It's, it's, but little ones, it's, they're, first see, of all, they're not going to understand scared. the story yeah, yeah. and it's going to scare them. It's going to scare them. So go support this film. Please. It's really good. Please. Uh, everybody did really well. So. If you have watched it, please stay. Spoiler if you time. Haven't watched it, go watch it and then come back. We're going to spoil some stuff. So, yeah, the. Uh, I don't know what to talk about first, but let's talk about the acting. Yeah. Both of them. Yep. Uh, I mean, everybody did well, but the, the, both of them. And he, he, he really impressed because, and obviously in Kumbhala Jinai, everybody was so good, but we really raved about, obviously, Fafa and Subban. Yeah. Right? We did. Those were the ones. And, and we said he was, he, he he was solid. Well. Yeah. But he really showed me that he was a, he's a really good actor. Really good actor. And he, like, and it's a very different role. There was a lot going on with this guy and his mental space. Yes. During this entire film. Yes. And, and he, he kind of just, he wasn't really show he, like he, he, you could tell like what was going on in his brain. He really put himself, cause this guy is, and that goes to the overall story. This is a story about mental illness a lot. Like, yeah, and the we'll border to, between, yeah. the border between, is what you're going, everything. This is this deals with the problems of alcoholism, yeah. sleep deprivation, um, f familial challenges, yeah. generational yeah. problems, um, it's complex. But you saw all that going on in his in his face yeah. and, and behind his eyes yep. and, and he, he did so well. He's like even in the part where like he was just dancing like crazy. Yeah. I thought he did a really good job at that point because that could have been like stupid and like and, and dumb. And I thought he, he pulled it off really really I did well. Too. The uh, last time I saw a dance that impacted me that much was uh, yeah. You betcha. GGBV. You betcha. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I he was he did so well. Fantastic. They were so so good together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he he showed that he is a incredibly strong actor. Yeah, really looking forward to more of what he's going to do because this role, both of these roles, require you for it to be as good as it is. Require actors of really deep substance. Yeah, really and, deep and, substance. And she seemed like she's a vet, and I know oh. we've seen her before, but she's so good. And but like, if I was thinking, I was like, if this was made like 
to two comparable actors in Hollywood. I know maybe like somebody like an Andrew Garfield and like Dame Judi Dench. Or That's some, exactly who I would think of. Some like, and it's that quality somebody, of acting. Somebody of that, or Maggie uh, yep. Smith. Yep. Somebody of that caliber uh, who's an amazing legendary actor and who can you pull would, it off. It would be those type of you people. You would That's do that. what she gave me. A hundred percent. She gave me Dame Judi Dench. Yep. She even gave like... Andrew Garfield yeah, to a comparison. Yeah. Um, the, she gave me all those like... She's so good. She brought a lot to this role. Uh, and as strong as he was, I think she was even stronger. Even by a, by a, in the same way, a Judy Dench uh -huh. would yeah. be a, about a step ahead than, of a, yeah, as good as Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Is. There's just that extra level of experience and life and nuance that she conveys that really evidences a, 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 this is, if you had the script and you had the story and you're making this film and you were doing it here in the States, you would say to yourself, we need to it's not box office. I'm not looking for the box office draw per se. That'll be great if we get that because you need to make money. But in order for this movie to be believable, for people to stay caring and for them to really work this, it's why Mike Flanagan uses the same actors over and over again because he knows they can carry the weight of what he wants to do. Yeah. This requires actors of substance and they both were fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And they had a, a really good give, and like it goes along to the story, but of their whole <laughs> complex relationship and, and the the... the dialogue they had between each other yeah. and the past relationships and, and all that. And that goes to the, um, the overall story of it. And it was the story so good. It's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of a slow moving story. Cause especially if you're expecting horror right off the bat, you're not going to get it's like, like, that's why it's like Mike, Mike Flanagan's yeah. like that. It's, it's all about you're building these relationships and then yes. up to the crescendo of the end. Right. Yeah. And, and there's a couple in between parts that are, that you'll get some suspense and scare and you know, what you're kind of looking for. But it, most of it's not that. It's it's more so the psychological. What's going on in these two minds and the, and the relationships of people. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I don't know if you got this. Uh, like, what do you of ov think the overall message or what? what like, what was it's it? A, I was going to put it in my paragraph, but then it would have been more of an essay. So the I, I really felt this was again like Mike Flanagan. So if you haven't watched Mike Flanagan, I highly, highly, highly recommend. You watch both his films and his series, but most especially in the series realm, Haunting of Hill House, Haunting of Bly Manor, and his newest one, Midnight Mass. Because what he does is the horror genre happens to be, in the same way that um, uh, Guillermo uses the genre that he does of spe specifically telling the stories of monsters or people dealing with the monstrous, he doesn't do it because that's something he gets a kick out of doing and knows it'll draw an audience. It's because he loves that and it's the best way he knows to tell a story. Flanagan does that with horror. His bigger issue isn't the genre. He just finds that genre, and I agree, to be the best genre to tell his stories because Haunting of Hill House is really about a, a haunted family. Haunting of Bly Manor is about a haunted love story, but it's set in the horror genre. You get, there's some serious jump scares. So I think this had the complexity of being both a story of a haunted family with their own ghosts and skeletons in the closet. Yeah. And families with their own ghosts and skeletons in the closets set within the context of an actual haunted house yeah i thought the house was more metaphor for people's baggage absolutely and is. And, and and mental the memories yeah. we leave in the homes yes yeah it was more representative than literal and it was 100 yeah, percent. It, it was is uh kind of a, a really a film about mental illness yeah i agree uh, and, and and how that needs to be kind of dealt with and and taken seriously and treated and kind of the the demons and these and how we scary talk about situations it. that these people actually go through that's real yes. to them yes um but uh, i thought it was a really good kind of without without making it obvious this is what the metaphor is. right I, it left it open for this what do you what do you think this somebody was could easily walk away from this and think it's just a haunted house story and yeah. that would be great and i bet that uh, Raul would be cool with that. Mm -hmm. And I think he also would appreciate, and this is the same with Mike Flanagan, he'd appreciate people who recognize the deeper understanding of what he's trying to convey, where he's using this as a template for a metaphor mm -hmm. to show you that these are the kinds of things that haunt people. Yeah. These are the kinds of things that possess their minds. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I love about Flanagan, that's what I love about Jordan Peele. And I checked, I think this is what his, second or third film yeah I it's did. so it's exciting really and the ending lends itself toward as i was watching it end i went please please i hope you had this in mind 
let's just keep making films about this house <laughs> or houses like it. Yeah. Where all you tell us are stories of new people that move in and they're dealing with stories of their own and their own ghosts and their own hauntings that they've got. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I love the fact that it just kind of ended and, th and it kind of just ended on the house. The empty room. There's no sound. There was no ghost. There was no nothing. It was just a room and then black. <laughs> and if you oh, watch, great it, I'm assuming you've all watched this. Should have said this probably at the front end. Obviously, but, you shouldn't um, be here if you haven't Yeah, watched you shouldn't it. be here. I'm so glad, again, this, like most films, you either need to watch them with full-blown great sound oh, yeah. the or sound. put on the AirPods, because I had my AirPods on watching again yeah. while Indrani I was, watching, was sleeping. I was watching here with the surround. Yeah, it, it, you got to do one or the other, because the sound work on this, uh, and yes, there was some dubbing, I'm, I've gotten used to it. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite moments was him getting scared and all you hear is his heartbeat yeah. racing. Yeah, that was because great. Because it was way underneath the sound scope. Mm -hmm. You had to listen carefully. The sound that was the scratching on the wall, you heard it traveling Yeah, in the wall. So the sound design on this is spectacular. Mm, One so of the best, most entertaining parts of this movie is the sound design. The sound department of, I wanna give them a shout yes, out. Yes, absolutely. It was such a... Kishan Mohan, Vignesh Radhakrishnan, and Rahul Siam, uh, all and their team. Yes, and their whole team, because this is this. The sound was a character in itself, and it lended itself to the very kind of Absolutely. spooky, scary vibe of the film and the score. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I just the moment the movie started, that was the first thing I put down on my notes. Was I am instantly loving the score, and I looked up uh, uh, Gopi Sundar, mm. and not surprising. Gopi Sundar has a long resume of work and wouldn't surprise me. I'd really love to know how much Rahul uh, is, a, is a lover of Flanagan because a lot of the score was reminiscent of, there's, this, there's these brothers that Flanagan uses for a lot of the scoring of his stuff. This was very similar to, it has what you expect in a horror film with the scary stuff, but then there's also these recurring themes that have a haunting nature to it that I think lend to that metaphor of this is more than just a ghost story, guys. This is about people being haunted. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that scared hand at the end was cool, though. <laughs> it was like a really good, uh, I don't know if they just did makeup on somebody. It almost looked like Gollum's hand a little bit. It did. I didn't know if that was grandma or yeah. if it was just the entity of that the at home. home. Yeah, I didn't know either. Uh, but I loved it. I thought Me it was, too. I thought it was real, real I nice. also love my, some of the the scariest visuals ever caught on film have very little going on. Mm -hmm. And he did it, man. He just did it so often. Like, when he comes out of the room, and this was many times, he comes out of the room and mom just goes like this. Yeah. And then you see the man sitting on the couch. Yeah. And then they go back to them, and then the next time you see them, the man has stood. Yep. And they then, out of nowhere, a little girl goes walking by. I love scares like that. And the fact that he never, and that obviously because that's the whole theme of it it's not they're not real right they're just they're in these people's minds but the fact that they're all shadows in the distance outside of that at the end when it was a hand maybe it was a last grasp effort uh, or something that, that that's the whole thing that can be debated the, the thing i didn't enjoy was the song the one song it we didn't need it i didn't think it was necessary yeah we didn't need film. it i i was like i Maybe this is for promotion, and that's fine if you have to do a song for promotion for to get the. It people. very well could be it production just, company it distri felt, distribution. Said. It just felt it didn't fit. It was yep. a nice song. It yeah. it wasn't pretty. It's just I was like, this just doesn't fit in this film to me. I agree a hundred percent. So that's that's my one gripe with the film is that. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's easily just it's like okay, forget it. It's yeah. like a forgettable page in a book. Yeah. You, you still love the Harry Potter book, but maybe you forgot page 27, you Yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, other than that, I thought that all the acting was great. The direction was, yes. was phenomenal. The uh, cinematographer, some of the shots that they did were excellent. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Excellent, and, and, excellent, and excellent. The use of shadow and so, yeah. And then I all was, the supporting actors did really well. I was well. so happy when we reached because we weren't getting the scares and it didn't bother me because the story and the acting of our two mains were so solid. I was enjoying watching every minute of them working that when we got to the what I knew was the climax and we were hitting that peak, each of the scare moments that, he, that were being done were so good. I was just really happy. Yeah. I was like, oh, this has yeah. been everything I was hoping it would uh, be. It, it, I'd have to go back and think, but it, it might be the best 
horror we've seen in Indian it's cinema. It's pretty darn. Um, it's in, it's right up there. I mean, we've seen some good ones, but like, none have been like crazy, crazy scary. This is probably the probably the scariest, right? Well, at least one of the best um, achievements in the discipline. Yeah. yeah, like so the ones that come to mind immediately, and I forget some of the names because they're not native language, so it's easy to lose that, but. The two that come to mind, there's three that come to mind of my favorites that we've seen that were scary. And the scariest of them till this one, for me, would have been the one with the husband and wife in the in the cornfield. Yeah, the Marathi one. The Marathi yeah. one. That one, I felt, was yeah. one of the best we've seen in a yeah, long time. For sure. And But if someone right today were to say, what's the best horror film that you've seen come out of India, I would say... Like as much as we love Stri and the cinematography, nothing touches the cinematography of the other one. Uh, um, uh, B b b b bulba bulbo, bulbo bulbo. Yeah, bulbo is just yeah. romance on celluloid. It's yeah. so gorgeous. I think overall, because this is so Jordan Peele, so Mike Flanagan, this is probably my favorite yeah. horror film in India. Yeah, and uh, it's an exciting stepping stone. I feel for the genre. Agreed. Um, especially, I don't know how many of them have been made in Malayalam. Uh, and like how prevalent, but I know in Indian cinema in general, it's not a category that has been delved into. And so I'm hoping they're starting to just like they're dipping a lot of money into OTT platforms. Yeah. Um, and the fact that this might not have done well as well on theatrical, mm -hmm. the fact that it can just be brought out on OTT platforms is, is, is great. Yeah. The only drawback, at least here in the States is the fact that it's on an OTT platform that isn't as accessible as others. So I'm hoping one of two things happens. I hope that first of all, everybody in India shares it on the platforms that are somewhere accessible. And then I hope it would get a, a larger distribution because of its popularity on another more common platform here. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's worthy and it should pave the way for more of this, especially that ending. I hope we get to see more thematic things, not just this, but I hope Rahul does a lot more in this genre because it's it's really good. Yep. Let us know what you thought about this film and what should be the next Malayalam slash horror film that we watch down below.